Hello, parents. Uh, my name is Rob Charlton. I am the AVID coordinator for Castle Park High School, and I am also teaching the ninth grade and 12th grade AVID classes uh, this year as well. Um, so you probably have me, or you're sorry, your son or daughter probably have me for a teacher in AVID as well as biology. Uh, there is a biology video that I sent out, but there's also this AVID video to talk about their AVID class. And we'll talk about why they have me for two classes as part of this presentation. Uh, below at the bottom of the screen, you can see this is my contact information. Uh, this is my cell phone number right here, 619-971-4746. Uh, also, here's my email should you need to email me. Um, please, if you have questions or concerns, um, reach out to me. If you need to get a hold of me also, you can send through Jupyter messages. So the Jupyter system where your son or daughter's grades are kept, there's an ability to send messages to the teachers. Uh, so you can send me a message through there as well. Okay. So I'm going to be talking about both the ninth grade class and the 12th grade class since we have them combined uh, this year. Uh, so depending on if your son or daughter is in a senior or a freshman, uh, you'll get both of that information here. All right. All right. So uh, let's talk about the program goals. So uh, whether you're a senior or a ninth grader, the goal has always been that AVID's goal is to get you to be ready to go into a four-year university. Now, do you have to go to a four-year university? No, you don't have to go. But I would like to get you ready for it, should you choose to go. Uh, we have had uh, many of our seniors last year who graduated, um, uh, of the ones who applied to a four-year university, 94% of them got accepted to a four-year university. So that's a very high rate um, of students that got accepted. Now, did they all decide to go? Not all of them. Some of them decided to go to a community college and then transfer to a four-year. I had one person decide to go into the military. Uh, there's a couple other students that went in a different direction as well. So it's not always about have to go to college. I just want you to be prepared so that you can go if you want to go. That's what the long-term goal is. Okay. The short-term goal is that if you are in the ninth grade class, I want to spend your ninth grade year and your 10th grade year getting you ready with all the skills and knowledge so that as an 11th grader, you can either start taking advanced placement courses. So that's called AP courses, which are basically college level courses here at high school. And you can actually earn college credit from taking those courses or go into the IB program with Mr. Manro, um, which is a super high level program that I think does a wonderful job of preparing students for college. They have something like a 100% rate of going to a four year after high school. So either one of these is an option for the 11th grade year. My job over the ninth and 10th grade year is to get you ready for those, okay? And then the immediate goal, what are we working on every single day? It's how to become a student who gets A's and B's in all their classes. Um, some of our students have been getting A's and B's all through middle school. And so now we just need to continue doing that in high school. Some of our students uh, come to us having gotten C's, maybe D's or other grades before. Uh, and so now we're gonna teach them how to start getting A's and B's in classes, especially the ones that they've struggled in in the past, like a math class or an English class. So that's the kind of stuff that we're, we're getting them ready right now. A's and B's in all classes, get you ready for that 11th grade year, and then eventually get you ready to go to college. So with lots of goals, all about pushing you to high level success. That's what we're all about in AVID. How does the program work? Okay, so if you start in the program as a ninth grader, you have me for two classes. You have me for AVID and biology. Uh, that is on purpose. The reason I do that is because uh, AVID is a class where I teach you skills, how to study, how to be organized, how to take notes, uh, a whole bunch of pr like presentation skills, computer skills, working in groups, collaboration, just skills, 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 and knowledge. Well, the biology class is then a core class where we're actually using those skills to learn biology information. So the two classes work hand in hand. Um, and by having me twice, the students really accelerate their learning and they start to move ahead of the, re the, the, the regular students at our school. And so that's how we accelerate them towards a path to college. So that I've been very much a stickler with our counselors to make sure that the students have me for both AVID and biology. 
This year, the two biology classes are periods one and three, and the two avid classes are periods two and four. So um, you should have that set up if, if everything is going correctly. Um, next year, they will stay in avid. So they'll have a new avid class with me where now I build upon their skills. I start teaching them some advanced note-taking, advanced presentation skills, debate skills, research skills, and we just keep adding to that skill set. And then I also have them again in honors chemistry. So they need to take chemistry anyway. So uh, they take chemistry with me and it's an honors course, which means it's a little difficult, a little more difficult than a regular chemistry course, but they also get a GPA boost for that course too. And so this is their first introduction to those high level courses and to see if they are ready to handle the rigors of, of high level work. Um, because again, our goal is to get them ready for those 11th grade college classes and then get them ready for college after they graduate. Okay, so um, it's a recommitment to staying in on the path to college. Okay, then the 11th grade year, you kind of have options. You stay in AVID with me again. So this would be the third year in a row that you would have AVID with me. And then you're taking AP classes at the same time. Uh, so I'm helping you with those AP classes. We're gearing you up for college applications, teaching you how to apply and all the things you're going to need for applications, as well as helping you in these tough college classes that you're taking. Or if somebody decides to exit AVID and enter the IB program, um, I have no issue with that at all. I think the IB program is wonderful at Castle Park. I think it does a great job of taking care of students and preparing them for college. And uh, it's probably our most rigorous course uh, uh, program. So um, if students are able to enter IB and they can be successful there, I'm all for that. If IB doesn't seem like a good option, then they can stay in AVID and take AP classes. So they have a little bit of a choice at starting their 11th grade year. And then the 12th grade year, which we have some seniors this year who are on the verge of graduating, they have me again for AVID. They're taking those high level college classes. And what we're basically doing in these classes is just college applications, college applications, college applications. Uh, the first two months are really just helping the students organize themselves, get all their colleges down, how they're gonna need to apply to each school, get all the things they need to apply. And they spend the first two to three months just applying to colleges. Uh, and they get that support from me while they're doing it. So that's somebody that can help them with all these college applications. So, um, so AVID is a four year program. If you're starting as a ninth grader, uh, you can stay in AVID for two years and then go to IB, or you can stay in AVID for all four years. And you'll have me every single year getting you more and more ready for the college uh, after, high, after high school. That's really the goal, get you ready for college after high school. Okay. Um, all right, so what is our college prep process? So in the ninth grade, what kind of things are we learning in ninth grade? So I'm teaching them, we start off the first couple months talking about who you are as a learner. Why should you care about going to college? Um, how do you build your self-esteem and your confidence so that you can be a successful student? Um, we start talking about some of the basic academic skills like note-taking, organizing a binder that I check every couple of weeks, keeping track of your grades, seeking out help, how to work with groups. Um, and really we're focused on trying to get all the students to have A's and B's, uh, as, uh, at least a 3.0 GPA or higher during that ninth grade year. So a lot of the ninth grade year is just kind of, why, why do we care to go to college and how do I basically get myself set up for success? The 10th grade year, uh, now they're going to be taking harder classes as a 10th grader. Uh, we'll be teaching them those higher level skills so they can study better, they can get ready for tests, they know how to handle these uh, harder classes. Uh, we start talking about college application parts, uh, things that they're going to need for the college application process. Um, they're, we're going to talk about scholarships, how do you get money, how do you start searching up scholarships, how do you fill out a scholarship application. Um, and then this one is really important here, becoming, oops, sorry, becoming competitive. Uh, I try to talk to the students, you know, like just applying to college doesn't mean you're getting in. You need to show that you are a top level student compared to all the other students. And so let me give you an example. San Diego State, which is our local, one of our local universities here, they get about 100,000 people trying to get into that school every year. 
but only about 15,000 actually get in. So that means, you know, 85,000 people are sent a letter that says, no, you're not accepted to San Diego State. And these are people who have good grades. These are people who are in clubs. So we have to make our students be more than just go to class, get good grades and go home. They need to be a well-rounded person, clubs, sports, extracurricular, um, some kind of volunteer work. Um, anything they can do that makes them really kind of stand out would be super helpful to the process. All right, the 11th grade year, um, which the seniors had last year, what were we doing? We were, taught, we were starting to research a bunch of colleges. We started to look at things like the letters that you're gonna to need to get, the personal statements, the UC questions you're gonna to have to answer. Um, we didn't do any SAT prep because it's not required this year due to the whole COVID pandemic situation. So the colleges aren't requiring it. Uh, normally we would have prepared them for the SAT and the, and the seniors would have already taken the SAT by now. Um, we're, we taught them about scholarships again and how to get money. I know getting money for college is a, is a, is a thing that really kind of weighs on families like, oh my gosh, how are we going to afford college? Uh, I talked to them about how to get all this free money from the government, from grants, from scholarships, and so that they can actually make college free if they put in the effort and the time. And then we talk about how you're going to be able to apply to all these schools in your senior year. So then we go to the senior year. And what are we doing? Boom, right off the bat, what schools are you going to apply to? That's what they're doing right now, putting together a list of the class, uh, colleges they're gonna apply to. And they're gonna work on those college applications from now until November when they're all due. Uh, in November, you're probably gonna hear about something called FAFSA, which is the financial aid uh, from the government to help pay for colleges. And so they're gonna to have to get some financial information and, and put some information to uh, this FAFSA application. And uh, students get a lot of money there to go to college. Uh, we had seniors last year that got like $38,000, $40,000. Some of them got a full free ride to go to some of the schools they got accepted into. Um, so I don't want money to be, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't want money to be the thing that keeps students from their dream of going to college. We can find money. There's always ways to figure out the money situation. Okay, what we want from them is to be able to get into the college in the first place. Um, and then scholarships, again, that's another way to get free money. They should start visiting colleges in around January or February, starting to look at the places that are starting, they're starting to get letters back from saying you got accepted. Um, and then they choose the college they want to go to. And then we finish off their senior year, just making sure they graduate, right? They got to graduate and then um, getting ready for the next steps after they graduate. So that's kind of the senior year in a nutshell. Um, college applications, FAFSA, scholarships all the time, um, and really just being successful in school on top of that. Okay, so if you're an avid nine, if you're a ninth grader, what kind of stuff are we going over? So again, understanding yourself, understanding personal skills, how to cope with things that might be going on in your life that affect your ability to be a good student, um, reading and writing skills, calendars, organization, collaboration, um, how to think your way through problems, how to question what you're learning, how to study, how to do presentations, how to manage your finances. Parents, that'll be an interesting one. And probably in the next month, you're going to have students talking about things like a mortgage or rent or how to afford a car or, uh, you know, living expenses, bills. Uh, that's because we're going to be doing a whole project where they actually plan their life when they're 30 years old and they have to kind of figure all that stuff out. Uh, I'm sure you would appreciate that as a parent. I know I do when my son uh, knows like, hey, I'm going to have to pay for this stuff. I got to figure this stuff out. It's like, yeah, you do. It's going to come. <laughs> life comes at you. So uh, we start to talk about that and, and, and give them some basic knowledge. Um, start researching careers and colleges they might be interested in. Uh, note taking group work, uh, just lots of skill learning. And this isn't everything. This is just kind of the big ones here. Okay, so lots of skills, 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 all the time, learning new things all the time. Um, what are the seniors learning? Okay, like I said, the seniors are going to be researching colleges, scholarships, keeping themselves organized, uh, getting financial aid for college. And then the really big one is the way the senior classes run is very independent. 
um, I am trying to prepare your son or daughter so that when they go to college, they don't just know the, the information. They know how to take care of themselves. They don't need uh, a teacher or a mommy or a daddy to tell them what to do all the time, right? I'm sure you would appreciate that. They can wake up on time. They can get to where they need to be. They can know when to study. They know when to go to their job. They know when to do everything and can handle and manage their life on their own. So we need to teach them those skills. So I'm teaching them that kind of stuff as seniors is how to handle things on your own um, as well as all the support and the college prep stuff. So that's kind of what senior year looks like. It's very independent. It's very much monitoring your own work and making sure you get everything done. Uh, expectations. So AVID stands for Advancement via Individual Determination, which is basically a way of saying that students are successful when they are determined to be successful, that they need to own their education, they need to take advantage of it and uh, try to make it the best they possibly can. So that's why it's called AVID class. Um, willing to work hard, that's, that's all I ask. You know, I don't need you to get A's in every class to be an AVID. I just need you to want to work hard and to keep pushing. If you're the kind of student that just keeps pushing, I'll show you the way. I'll show you how to get those A's. But uh, I can't I can't make you work and I can't make you show up. That's all I need. Show up and give me your best effort every day. If they're giving me that, they're going to be successful. And then um, this is a hard one because I know, you know, sometimes we have things going on in our lives. But putting school first, um, if you really want your son or daughter to go to college, Sometimes they'll be the first one in your family to go to college. You have to, to prioritize that. Uh, it's hard. It's hard at home because I know that you're having your children take care of younger siblings, maybe doing you know, some kind of chores around the house. Um, maybe they even have a job on the side. I get it. But you have to ask yourself if, they, if you really want them to go to college, that, co that school has to be their number one. Uh, and so give them time at home to get their homework done, give them time uh, to, to organize themselves and get their work together. I ask for about an hour every night. Uh, I don't know if they'll always need a whole hour, but just one hour where they can be in a spot, uh, nobody, nobody running in, no little brothers and sisters running in and grabbing their stuff, uh, no asking to do chores or anything like that, just, just one hour to themselves to get their work done. Um, and that way I'll push them from my side, you can push them from your side and we'll see them be successful on their way to college. Um, how are my classes different? Uh, so the middle school mentality uh, was, well, I just gotta get my work done, right? Teacher told me to do this, I got it done, boom, let me turn it in, I'm done. Okay, we wanna break that a little bit. Okay, I need them to start thinking about what, it, what are I learning? What did I understand today? What did I actually get out of this? How am I a better person from doing this than I was yesterday? That's a very mature thought, but I need them to start thinking that way. School isn't just check it off and be done with it because that's not how you go to college. You need to start saying like, how can I get smarter? How can I get better? What more can I learn? That's, that's the kind of college going idea. Um, the other thing in middle school, is the, uh, you know, the, what I call the little kid mentality, right? They just kind of do whatever they want until somebody says, all right, now go clean or, or now go watch your brother and sister or now go to school. Um, we need them to start becoming their own person, figure out when to do things, uh, self-starters. You know, nobody has to tell me to go do my chores. I know I'll take care of it myself. Nobody has to tell me when to do my homework. I can take care of it myself. Nobody has to get me up in the morning and make sure I eat breakfast. I can take care of it myself. That's, that's where we want them to go, is be this independent, self-learning, self-guided person, which is a successful adult, right? That's what we all want. All right, so what are you gonna see over the next few months? Um, coming out of the pandemic, I'm pretty sure coming back to school is a whole new experience for a lot of them. So uh, there's gonna be some adjustment time. They're, they're not gonna come back and just get A's right off the bat. Uh, so you might see some dips in grades in the beginning. Um, they're going to be developing as an independent learner. And the way that, that I develop that is not to keep them from failing. What happens is I tell them, here's what you should do. Some of them listen, some of them don't. The ones who don't slip, they fall, they trip, they fail a class, they fail a test, they're falling behind in work. And my job is to be there and say, okay, you're falling behind in work. 
let's fix that. Let's get that back on track. And I show them how to do that. But I'm not going to keep them from failing because a lot of the times we only learn when we fail. And so they need to see that what they're doing isn't working and they have to make that change. And so that, that takes a little bit of time to develop. It doesn't happen overnight. So be patient as they're going through that because they're going to get frustrated. And you just say, well, that's, that's the way it goes. That's just how you learn. You got to learn to pick up yourself after you make mistakes. Um, and then they're going to be developing a whole bunch of new skills, things that they've never done before. You know, keeping a binder nice and organized. Make sure that all your papers are in a nice three ring binder instead of stuffing them in your backpack. Um, keeping track of assignments on a calendar. Um, changing the way you approach school. Changing the way you approach tests. This is all new for them. So be patient as they're going through this. Like I said, you may see some dips in grades. They may have been a B student in middle school and all of a sudden you see like a couple Fs on their progress report and you're like, whoa, where'd these Fs come from? Be patient, uh, trust the process. It will work, it will come around for them, okay? Um, and that's what I mentioned. Grades might drop even a full grade. You might've had an A student in middle school and all of a sudden they got nothing but Bs or Cs. Or maybe they had B's and C's in middle school and all of a sudden you see a couple D's and F's and you're like, what is happening? Um, I wouldn't freak out on the first progress report. Uh, the second progress report comes out around November. If you don't see improvement back up by November, then I would start to get a little worried. I will be worried as well. Um, and I'll be talking to you and the student at that point in time, okay? All right, needs from the home. I kind of mentioned these already. Again, can you give them an hour each night where they're not uh, interrupted by others? Uh, they should have calendars of what they need to do every night. So that should help to keep them uh, on point. Um, and then the only other thing I need you to do is just positively support them. Um, you know, they're gonna go through a tough couple periods here where they're like, whoa, this is hard. I don't know if I can do this. I can't, you know, they start to doubt themselves a little bit. Just, you know, reassure them, you can do this. Uh, I have faith in you. You you know, if you need help, reach out to Mr. Charlton. I know he'll guide you. Um, just, just back them up. Just be in their corner. You know, they'll figure it out. But if you can back them up a little bit and just say, hey, I trust you. I love you. We're going to do this. Um, because a lot of times they're the first one in the family to go to college. And that that's a tough chore. That's tough. Um, and then if you do want to talk to me again, reach out to me, check in with me. Uh, we could set up a conference. You and I could talk on uh, the computer or over the phone or in person, totally up to you. Um, and we'll, and we'll chat and we'll see what we can do together. Um, so let's get them to college. These are some of the colleges that we got our seniors into last year. This isn't all of them. We got them into a lot. So uh, it does happen. It does work. I'm asking for a little bit of trust. It, it will happen for your son or daughter if they stick to it and keep at it, okay? And again, if you have any questions, there's my cell, my email, and you can always send me messages on Jupiter. Um, and again, I hope to see you on Thursday night during the time slot for your period, uh, either period two or period four. And um, you can ask me any questions that you might have regarding the program. I'm always here. Uh, I'm always here to support the students. All right, I will see all of you hopefully Thursday night. Have a good one and I'll see you then.